the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. You've been with me through the fire. In darkest nights, you have closed like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God of God Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God Now will y'all stand up with us? We got the words on the screen Will y'all sing this last verse with this last chorus with us? It's all my life you have been faithful Cause all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running. 
of God Oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness Of God Amen. Yes Luke chapter number 10 A very familiar story You're gonna know this And you've probably heard Preaching on this Sunday school, uh, a Sunday school lesson, a vacation Bible school lesson, or something on this particular story. Look at uh, Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But, aren't you glad when God butts in? You know, the priest came by and he couldn't help him. And the Levite come by and he couldn't help him. But there was a certain Samaritan. As he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. I'm about to enjoy the Bible reading. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I think I've heard somebody else say that before. And when I come again, <laughs> I will repay thee. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. He said, he that showed mercy on him. And then said Jesus unto him. And Jesus says unto Christ Church of Baptist Fellowship, go and do thou likewise. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for allowing us to be here. We thank you for the good number of folks that are here today. And Lord, they didn't come to hear me. I don't have anything to say, but your word sure has already something to say already to us. And I thank you for uh, these folks that have gathered. I pray that we'd get something now uh, from the blessed pages. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, amen. Here is what they call a parable. What do you say, a parable? A parable is a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It's Jesus talking and it would almost be like a preacher, if you heard a preacher and you pause and give an illustration, a farmer went to sow seed in his field, or you've got a tree over here, a good tree and a bad tree. You got a broad way and a narrow way. All of those kinds of things are parables which Jesus used, just like a preacher would do in his sermon, using an illustration. And he tells us this story of the Good Samaritan. You already are familiar with the Good Samaritan. You've heard the story. Matter of fact, we have laws on the book. It's called the Good Samaritan Law. That means that you see somebody in trouble. It is the Good Samaritan Law that you stop and help them. You have to be really careful these days. And it's a sad fact that you can't help just everybody because you don't know when it's a setup and when it's not. But there is a good Samaritan law on the books, and this story is where uh, that comes from. But here I want you to notice uh, what the Bible says. We do have a certain uh, man. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem is set up on a high plain. Matter of fact, they say Jerusalem uh, geographically is the center of the universe. Anybody that leaves Jerusalem always goes down. So when this man left the presence of God in Jerusalem, he went down to Jericho. Can I say this? Once you leave the presence of God and you get into sin, it's a downward slope. It is a downward slope. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The wages of sin is death. 
Sin, S-I-N, middle letter is I. Your problem is not the person across the room. Your problem is not the person in front of you. Your problem is not the person beside you. Your problem is the I in the middle of sin. And everybody in here has a sin problem. I know we're not going to get a lot of amens right here. But we'll get to the good stuff in a minute. You just got to endure this part. Once you leave Jerusalem, it's a downward slope into sin. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you a whole lot more than you want to pay. This man left Jerusalem, went down to Jericho, and guess what he did? He fell among thieves. Ladies and gentlemen, you can have friends, you can have boats, you can have houses, you can have lands, but I'm telling you what, when that material stuff leaves, your friends will leave too. And as long as you got stuff, you'll have friends, but when your stuff is gone, you won't have any friends no more. This fella fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment. That's what sin is going to do to you. Have you ever noticed the commercials? Uh, they'll have uh, a, uh, an alcohol commercial and all of this. And, and boy, they, I mean, and, and, and this, they'll, it, especially on a hot summer day, they'll have a commercial. And boy, it's a beer commercial. And they got a cooler. And boy, that, that spring water is running. It's cold. Everybody's sweating. And boy, that beer is floating down in that water. And man, it looks so good. And all of these. These women are around and all of that kind of stuff. And that commercial gives you the idea that if I drink that, I'll have all of these women and all of these cars and all of this good stuff. But the part of the commercial they leave out is the wreck on the highway where the car is turned upside down and the car is on fire and somebody's having to drag somebody out by the skin of their teeth, uh, fighting for their life, uh, that is the part that sin will leave out of the commercial. Sin's going to cause you to fall among thieves, and it's going to strip you of everything you got and leave you half dead. This man was a, I was supposed to give you a three-point outline. You can't preach without a three-point outline. Number one, this, the misery of this sinner. You put yourself right here where this man was. Now, we can't fault him too bad because, ladies and gentlemen, we've all been there. Maybe not in every sense. Everybody's life, everybody's walk is a little different. But when it's all said and done, I think the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. I think the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I think uh, uh, you just say, well, why in the world are we in this mess? It's because Adam and Eve, uh, in the Garden of Eden, they had a perfect environment. Uh, I mean, they were set up the center of the universe, probably, geographically, where Jerusalem is now. And boy, they're set up real high. And all of a sudden, sin entered into the camp. They got kicked out of Eden, which means they had to go down. And this society has been going down ever since. You get six chapters in Genesis, and it goes so far down that God says, my spirit will not always strive with man. He has to send a flood and destroy the whole thing by water. That was 4,500 years ago. Imagine what we're in the shape we are in now, and God is holding back his wrath upon this world, and this world keeps going down and down and down. Bible says it waxed worse and worse. I'm giving you the bad news up front, okay? The bad news is this thing ain't getting any better. This thing ain't getting any better. Now, now let me, I, I, I hate to tell y'all this, but it don't matter who gets in office next. The thing, the train is still derailing. It just all depends on how fast the train derails. If you elect the wrong person, it's going to derail pretty fast. 
If you elect the right person, it's going to slow down the process, but we're still headed down a downward slope because our nation has forgotten God. Every person in this world is a sin. You say, preacher, what is sin? What is sin? Well, the Bible says in 1 John, it says sin is a transgression of the law. This is the law of God, a transgression. If you are speeding down the highway and you see those blinking blue lights up behind you and you have to pull over, they are going to give you, you have transgressed against the speeding laws. I know we don't call it that, and it's not on the ticket anywhere, but you have transgressed against the laws of the state of Tennessee or whatever state you're in. Somebody called me. Uh, this just happened to come to my mind. Somebody called me. We was in Florida, whenever it was, and somebody called me and said, uh, uh, we got, a, we got a, a picture of you speeding through this certain thing. I said, you got a picture of me? They said, yeah. Is your license plate? I said, but whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, you got a picture of me. No, it was your car. I said, how do you know it was me? They said, well, who was driving your car? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Could have been one of them aliens y'all looking for up there. Could have got my car. They said, well, you going to pay this ticket? I said, I ain't, unless you got a picture of me doing it. Y'all pray for me. I ain't paying no stupid camera ticket. You pull me over and, that, and, you, and show the radar, hallelujah. I ain't paying no camera ticket. That's about the dumbest thing in the whole wide world. Outlaw them all. That's the dumbest thing. If you're la too lazy to sit out on the street and clock me, don't set up no stupid camera and try to catch me. Because I ain't a paying it. That, where was that? <laughs> Keith, that wasn't even in the notes. Hallelujah. Transgression against the law. You say, preacher, what is sin? Anything that transgresses against God's law in that Bible. We have the misery of this particular sinner going down. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. They have stripped him and wounded him and left him half dead. He is in a desperate predicament and he couldn't save himself. Matter of fact, we have a fellow that comes by. Which one comes by? Was it the Levite first or the priest? The priest comes by. And he comes by and he looks down there and sees the fellow and he just passes on by. Can I say this? You say, preacher, what is the priest? Well, the priest, that is religion. The priest represents religion. Well, can I, can I say this? Religion won't help you. Religion will not come down to where you are and get you out of the mess that you're in. Religion, and I know that goes against the grain because everybody says, well, I'm religious. Well, that, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of religious people in hell right now. A lot, of, a lot of people that went to church are in hell right now and they were very religious. You say, preacher, I, this ri religious and ceremonialism and ritualism, what all is that? Well, I got, I got interested when they uh, coronated the new king, King Charles over there. I got interested. I watched it. And, man, you're talking about a big, spectacular event. The Anglican Church, the Church of England over there, and, boy, they come in, and they're marching in, and everybody's sitting all sideways, and, and you got to know when to stand up, when to sit down, and you got to know, you know, when to... Uh, sing and what song to sing and when not to sing and what to do and, and, and all of this ritualistic stuff, ceremonial stuff. And boy, they come in and man, it's, re I mean, real, and that's just what they do. That's their, you know, and their, their church is just like that. You come in and you do a deep knee bend and uh, my head hurts, my stomach hurts, I can't find my cigarettes. And, 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 <laughs> And, and so they're doing all of that stuff, and it's ritualistic, and it's ceremonial. That has never saved anybody. That has never saved the first person. Religious people, 
Matter of fact, there was a fella by the name of Cain. He had a brother named Abel. It's in Genesis chapter number 4. And uh, both of them uh, went to church. Both of them were raised in a Christian home. They had a mom and dad that knew uh, the right way. And Abel and Cain brought two sacrifices. Cain brought a religious, ritualistic, ceremonial Something out, he brought turnips and fruit and, 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 and salad, and <laughs> he brought salad, and <laughs> he brought a salad. <laughs> Abel brought a steak, yes. Cain brought a salad. God looked at the steak, he said, I like that. And the salad, he said, I reject that, I don't even like salads. Cain went to church like Abel did and still died religious and went to hell. You say, you got another example? I do. The fellow by the name of Judas. Judas was a religious man, part of the disciples. Matter of fact, he run around with the Lord for three and a half years. Very religious. Religious but lost. You say, preacher, my religion, I'm depending on my religion to get me to heaven. Your religion ain't going to get, it's going to pass by you on the other side and leave you in the pit where you're at still half dead. (laughs) Two men went to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a publican. One prayed thus with himself. God, I thank the Lord that I'm not like his other men are, like that publican over there. I I fast and I I fast twice a week. I tithe of everything I got uh, and all of this. Boy, God, look at me. Boy, I'm doing this. I've been baptized and I've been uh, this and I take the sacraments and I do all of that stuff. And I go to church. I don't miss. I'm there Sunday morning and Wednesday night and whenever else the door is open, I'm there. I'll help. I'll do everything. I take care of my neighbor. I'm a good Samaritan. I fix flats when I see people on the side of the road. Lord, I've just, I mean, it's, I, you got to let me in. Publican over here wouldn't even lift, lift up his head. He said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'm everything that man says I am. But God, I can't save myself. I wish you'd save me. Boy, do you see the difference? Oh, the priest couldn't. Well, then the Levite come by. The Levite come by and he said, well, I can't help that guy. I'm going to have to leave him down. I can't. The, and you say, what's the Levite? Well, the Levite is a representation of the law. The Ten Commandments can't get you there either. So I asked one fellow one time, I said, are you going to heaven? He said, oh, yeah. I said, how do you get there? He said, well, you've got to keep Ten Commandments. I said, name them. He said, um. I said, you mean to tell me you've got to get to heaven. You've got to keep, keep Ten Commandments to get to heaven, and you don't even know them? If you're keeping Ten Commandments against you heaven, you ought to be able to know them and quote them. Now, you, you say, preacher, what about Ten Commandments? I thought you had to keep Ten Commandments. There wasn't but one that kept Ten Commandments, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The law was never there to save you. It was there to show that you couldn't save yourself. Matter of fact, picture it this way. Picture the law. Picture the law as that mirror up above your sink in the bathroom. That mirror is the law. It shows you you got dirt on your face. But the mirror can't get the dirt off your face. Where's my Pentecostal side? I look into the law, and the law says, boy, you got a dirty face. But you can't take the mirror off the wall and wash your face. But there's something under the sink That's not the law, it's grace. (laughs) And you sort of lather it up and put it on a wash rag. Y'all know what a wash rag is. Put it on a wash rag and then you can look into that mirror and see where that dirt is and you'll be able to get that off of your face. The law, listen, let me give you this example before I move on. The law, there's nobody in here, I can promise you, nobody in here has ever been pulled over by the police, a state trooper, law enforcement, whatever. Never have you ever been pulled over on the side of the road, and they knock up, and they walk, say, hey, you roll the window down, and they say, hey, I just want to give you this little sheet, sheet of paper right here. A little sheet of paper right here that says, we've been following you for the last 15 minutes. You've been under the speed limit, and we want to congratulate you for going under the speed limit. We want to say thank you. 
for obeying the law. Has that ever happened to you? No, never happened to you. Not even looking for hands because you know it ain't never happened to you. The only reason the law pulls you over is to condemn you and say, you messed up, you got dirt on your face. And then you try to wiggle your way out of it and say, well, you know, uh, you know, something, this, that, and the other. And this is what they say. They say, tell it to the judge. Well, the law looked at me and said, hey, boy, you got dirt on your face. I looked at the law and I said, can you help me get it off? They said, you had to tell it. To, they said, you had to tell it to the judge. I said, Okay. And boy, I'm telling you what, I got before the judge, and guess what? I settled out of court. <laughs> I settled out of court and got my face clean. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Boy, I'm telling you what, don't you know, man, the Levite walked by there, and the priest walked by there, and they just left him laying there. They couldn't help him or none. And you imagine the Jehovah's Witness, they go by there, and they just throw a Watchtower magazine down there and said, hey, boy, read your way through there. And then the Mormons come by over here, and they threw a bicycle down there, a pair of black pants and a white shirt, said, ride your way out of there. Somebody else said, throw some water down in there and said, hey, boy, swim your way out of there. And then the Muslims come by and threw a bomb down there and said, blow your way out of there. But I'm just here to tell you, ain't none of them got that man out. There ain't but one that got you out. And that's where Jesus Christ came to where you was when nobody else would come to where you was. Jesus came to me. Some of you didn't like that. That's why the Lord called me and didn't call you. He knew I'd say it and you wouldn't. The misery of the sinner. But now I'm seeing the mercy of the Savior. What's the song? Help me. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within Seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. Then from the waters lifted me. Now safe. Safe am I. What does the old song say, Charlie? Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way. I was wretched and vile as could be. And the Savior in love. Hallelujah. When the Savior reached down for me. I see this certain Samaritan came to where he was. And notice this right here. He pulled in the wine and the oil. You say, what in the world was that? Well, that wine, that was to cure the infection. He had open wounds. Remember, first verse we read, had wounded, left half dead. He was wounded. Well, the only way to fix the wound, the Lord Jesus Christ, Isaiah 53. Let me see, let me see if I got this right. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. For he could heal us. He was wounded for us and shed his own blood, a picture of that wine, and it kills the sin infection. When I was born, there was an infection in my body. And uh, when I trusted Jesus Christ, my personal Savior, that blood, I got a blood transfusion. I got Jesus' blood running through my veins. It ran out the infection. And then he put oil on top of that. You say, what is that? Well, the wine was to get rid of the infection. And the oil was to keep it from coming back. <laughs> well, I almost jumped in your lap. Hallelujah. Woo. That oil. Listen. He, look. It got rid of the infection. Do y'all remember this? Can I reminisce for a second? I'm fixing to tell my age right here, Tommy. I remember. It's grandma now. Grandma. Now mine are dead, but grandma. How many of y'all remember this? See if I can take you back for a minute. How many of y'all remember when I say this and you don't cringe, you don't know what I'm talking about? Mercurochrome and methylate. 
Now, some of you young ones don't even raise your hand because you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about when I say that glass stopper with the red uh, little pinching thing on top of it that sucks up that little red fluid. Yeah. Billy, <laughs> you as old as I am now. And, uh, and, and when you skin your knee, Grandma, you'd be sitting right there. And she's getting ready to put it. you say, hang on, hang on, hang on. And she's getting ready, and she gets that stopper, and she calls all the other grandkids around. And she says, all right, when I put on there, y'all get ready to blow. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. You put it on there, and all the other kids are going. <laughs> <laughs> now, if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, the worst thing that ever happened to our generation was neosporin. Neosporin don't hurt, it don't burn, it don't. <laughs> Our kids, they don't know what, they don't know what it's about. They just put Neosporin on and just keep on going, and they don't know what that is about. <laughs> and we're raising a bunch of, a generation of sissies on Neosporin. <laughs> we need to bring back the methylate and the mercurochrome. But Sammy, that chased out that infection, and then he put that oil on top of that. Now they got your attention all back. He put that oil on top of that, and that was to keep the infection from coming back. We talked about it last Sunday. I'm not going to rehash it again, but he says we're sealed to the day of redemption. Amen. Put in that oil and wine. I got to hurry. Then he said this. He put him on his own beast. I wonder if it was a camel. Put him on. I know it ain't in there. He set him on that camel between them humps, you know. <laughs> and brought him into an inn. Now watch, I'm coming down. To come down the car. Brought him into the inn. And he said, you take care of him. Here's two pence. I'll come back. And when I come back, if he owes you anything else, I'll pay it. In other words, let me translate it this way. Just put it on my account. Now, watch. I, I, drawing down the clock. We got to measure the sinner. We got the mercy of the Savior. The mercy of the Savior. But watch this last point right here. The ministry of the saints. Amen. Now listen. Christ Church Baptist Fellowship. Listen. Everybody gets saved around here. It's almost, I want you to just picture it for a second what our ministry is right here millsfield community that's where all our ministry is now i know some of you come from far lands far here there and yonder and we we love it come on the difference is worth the distance but just picture yourself picture yourself god walked by and picked you up out of horrible pit set your feet on the solid rock establish your going put a new song in your heart even praise unto God he put you on his beast and he brought you to Christ Church Baptist Fellowship and he said y'all take care of him till I get back y'all take care Christ Church y'all take care of him and I'll come back it is our job God has left us in charge of those. This is our ministry. You say, preacher, why you say some of the stuff? This is our ministry. We want to see people do right. We want to see people. I'm not talking about perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'm talking about live a godly life. Serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Get in a local church. Serve. Stand firm in these last days until he comes back. And when he comes back, he'll find us serving. Those people that he's entrusted, Dalton told me 120, 115, 20 in here, he's entrusted us to watch and take care of one another until he gets back. When he gets back, I, I saw that, Sammy's coming in. I saw that, uh, that imputation. I know the word's not there, but he said, Here's two pence. I'm going to leave. When I come back, if he owes you anything, I'll repay it. It's almost the same thing that Paul said in the book of Philemon. When he said, if he owes you aught, put it on my account. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you when he died on the cross for you. He paid your debt, and we have placed that on his account, and my sins are paid for. When the priest couldn't help me, and the Levite couldn't help me, there was only one man that could help me. His name is Jesus Christ. God saved me, and he placed me in this church. He saved you place you in this church and he's entrusted us with people kids adults you say why are we having a paint party on Thursday why are we having revival why are we dismissing with have revival why are we doing so many things vacation Bible school why are we doing all these things that's our ministry is people is our ministry love it people Oh, the older I get, the more profound that becomes. Just loving people where they're at. I first got saved. I thought if everybody didn't do like I did, believe like I did, and 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 dress like I did, and and wore the same clone I did, you know, they wouldn't even go into heaven. Not really, but. Older I get, just loving people right where they're at. People this week probably had trouble. We don't even know anything about. God has entrusted us. Check on them people. Watch over them people until he gets back. Let's all stand over the building. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. God, help us to be good Samaritans. If there's somebody under the sound of my voice that don't know you, they don't know you, I pray, Lord, they'd come today.